So, ladies and gentlemen, what are you having this Christmas? Is it going to be ham? Is it going to be turkey? Is it going to be beef? Is it going to be a lovely hoggett, that's lamb? But whatever you're having, be sure to do one thing. Make sure you get your temperatures right and your timings right. That is basically the key to Christmas when you're cooking. So, in front of me here is a gammon. Now, what's the difference between a gammon and a ham? Well, a gammon is raw, and the moment we cook it, whether it be boiled or roasted, that's when it turns into a ham. So, I've currently got a gammon, a piece of gammon, a huge, quite a big piece of gammon, and it's from Price and Fretwell, the butchers, the award-winning butchers, Price and Fretwell. Now, check out the link below. You'll see all the lovely gammons that they have got. I only use Price and Fretwell for my meat. They are in Derbyshire, and I am aware that they can deliver quite far and wide, so go check them out. Now, I've got here a gammon that is, I need to get my glasses on, there we go. We have got a piece of gammon here by the weight, which is approximately close to five kilos, okay? I got five kilos of, of pork just sitting here. Now the second thing is, when you worked out the timings of this, is have you got a pan big enough for it to boil in? So make sure you've got a large enough pan. Point number two. Now, the cooking instructions, we tend to go with about 500, 500 grams, per 500 grams, 20 minutes. And then the final after that is adding on another 20 minutes. Now, if you are to overcook it, it's not a problem. What will happen is it'll crumble. Okay, it doesn't do anything bad to it at all. Now, I do suggest that if you've got a temperature probe, that you probe it after a couple of hours just to see what the heat temperature is. If the middle, middle thick bit is over, over 65, take it out, leave it, because the residual heat will carry on cooking it. Now, so there's my, my lovely, lovely piece of gammon. So, let's talk about the spices. So we're only going to use three spices. I only work in threes. I love food threesomes. So what's going to be going in to this mixture? I've got some lovely star anise. Star anise is a aniseedy flavour. Now, what I would be using with a piece of gammon like that, I would only use a maximum of one large star anise. It's more than enough. The moment you start putting two or three in, it's going to make it more very aniseedy. If you want it aniseedy flavour, by all means, but I only recommend with that size of of gammon that you use one piece of uh, star anise. So that's that. The next spice I'm gonna be using is a bay leaf, classic bay leaf. And again, same thing, you want one large piece for that size. Double it the moment you start getting larger pieces of, uh, of gammon, but one bay leaf. The next ingredient is good old fashioned, the king of spice himself, some peppercorns. So there's my three spices, just three. Now, I am going to add in another flavouring, where it's the taste of Christmas, which is an orange. Now, I'm going to slice the oranges and put that into the water. Now, it's really important with your gammon that you soak it for at least a couple of hours because it's going to be brined. Now, what's brined? Brined is basically it's been sat in a salt solution, making it tasty. Now, you want to take out as much salt as possible to stop it being salty. So when you have your bacon, it's quite salty, isn't it? So this, you want to reduce the salt. So ideally, a couple of hours. Um, but if you want to leave it in water overnight, leave it in overnight. So I'm now going to put this all together in a large pan and put it on to boil for at least two and a half hours. Yeah, gammon, scene two, take oh. one. So it's come out of the pot. And I've just let it just rest for a good five, 10 minutes. The only reason I'm letting it rest is so that all the juices just come out. And as you can see, just about it, there's a few bit of juice that's come out there that's with the cooking liquor. And that's the only reason. Now what we're gonna do next is take off this lovely bit of string that's been holding it all together. And we're gonna take off the skin. Now, what are we gonna do with the skin? Well, we're gonna take some, some of the cranberry chutney and we're gonna smear it all over the skin so we're going to have a lovely cranberry chutney crackling. Oh, I can taste it already. Now, so, get yourself a sharp knife. 
or or some cooking scissors. Okay, and then we can gently just take this uh, string off. That's all we're doing, taking the skin off, and off it comes. You see how easy that came off then. You do want to let it cool down a little bit. You don't want it to be red, red hot, so you won't be able to handle it. So take that off. Just be gentle. Still, still be gentle. Just turn it around like that. Just hold it and then just take it off completely like that. This can go in the bin, out of the way. And then we've got this here now. Now, with your knife, you can actually slip your finger underneath like that. Okay, you don't necessarily need a knife, really, but it can get a bit hot because it's still quite warm. And you can just peel that off like that. So if it gets stuck here, you just get your knife and just give it a bit of a, a bit of a slice. There you go. Same in there, just get underneath. And you just want to just release it off like that. And there you have it. Now this is going to be a very different kind of crackling because this is, again, it's a gammon, not your usual pork loin. So it's quite thick and, and quite meaty in here as well. So we're going, to, we're going to cook that as well separately now. Skewered some lovely cloves inside the crisscrosses. And you'll notice that I've not covered the whole of the ham with the cloves. Now, the only reason I've not done that is because the other day I made this and my son wasn't too keen on the power of the clove. He loved the taste of it, but he said it, in certain areas it kind of overpowered. So what I thought was we should only do half of the ham. So some of your guests might like one half and the other guests might like just a plainer side. So it gives you a bit of an option. And I think personally it makes it look quite aesthetically pleasing. So phase two. So we take a lovely bit of this cranberry chutney and before I do anything with the cranberry chutney the first thing I need to do is on this crackling is salt it just put lots and lots of salt I'm using the, the pink Himalayan salt and that'll just dissolve over the top of it a nice salty pre-dinner drink so we've got my brush use a brush you would be it'd be difficult just to use a spoon so use a brush so you can actually brush it all over and it does make sense to do that and you can just dab it if you try to do this with a spoon it won't work well it will work but it's not the same See, I can, and I'm able to brush it then and paint and literally paint it all over now there are recipes out there with honey and mustard and loads of different things now this this Chutney here, oh, we're gonna have a bit of broken off ham. Mm. Chefs love eating the bits of ham on the side. Now this has got all the ingredients you need. So you've got the pecanness of the spice, you've got a bit of pepper in there, you've got a little bit of chili in there, a little bit of garlic. Now you can do a more adult version if you want and add some whiskey in here if you want. Just takes it to another level. But to be quite honest, you've got lots of flavours going on here. And you don't really, really need to overdo it with the, the spices. And you're going to need to do this a couple of times. So you put it in the oven, let it glaze, go back in the oven again. And this will probably take approximately about another 30 minutes and then you can have it quite warm on your table if you're having it as the main with your turkey or with beef or whatever you're having or you can let it rest and let it go cold completely cold and have it for boxing day on your buffet or Christmas day night whatever you fancy and you see I'm just really liberally putting it all over and it will as it melts down it will fall down and you want to continue to keep on painting this over and you're going to need to do this a couple of times out of the oven. And I'm going to do the same on the crackling as well. Just going to dab it, push the salt in as well and dab that on. 
The crackling will probably take a little bit longer. The reason for that is because it's been sat in water, it's been cooked in water, so it's gonna need to dry out. So that's gonna take a little bit more time. But because it's got a good layer of meat underneath, it's like a really meaty crackling. It's not gonna be a crispy crackling, if that makes sense. So again, I'm just brushing that all over. That's giving it loads of flavor and taste. Into a hot oven, 180 to 200 degrees. And then just keep an eye on it up to about 20, 30 minutes for the ham. And then the, the pork scratchings, just keep an eye on it and let it and see it go crispy. But there is all the painting done. And now this is gonna go straight into the oven to finish off. So the ham is now a ham. It's no longer a gammon because we've cooked it. Now, it's been in the oven on a nice high heat, 182 degrees. I've been keeping an eye on it because you don't want it to, to burn. Uh, every oven is different, every meat is different. So one thing I've got to tell you folks, when you get recipes from us chefs, from Jamie, from me, from Gordon, whoever, you need to just think sometimes a little bit outside the box. The, every uh, temperature, every ingredient is different, so you just gotta use your common sense a little bit. So, here it is. Now you'll notice that it's got a very deep, deep red color, like a, a ruby red color. Now because, what, what that is, is all the cranberry that fell off onto the tray created a new kind of jammy effect and went really red. So I took the brush, which is still, you can see the color of it still, and I carried on brushing it. Now what you can do just for another extra glaze, just to finish it off, just take your brush and then just finish off all over some more glaze, just to give it that really shine. Now <clears throat> you do want it, <clears throat> want it to rest if you're gonna be carving it warm. Because if you carve it straight away, you got to remember this, this ham has been having a massive party. You just need to let it calm down a little bit before slicing it. Now, I've let it rest <clears throat> for a good 20 minutes now. And I'm gonna have a slice. So I'm gonna turn it round. So if you remember, <clears throat> we had our lovely cranberry sauce. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> the reason I've turned it around, it's easier to carve on this side rather than down that way. Okay, you wanna go uh, with the grain rather than against the grain, does that make sense? And now, the only reason I've got this orange here is just to say to you, you could decorate your platter with oranges, some cloves, make it more direct, uh, decorative for your buffet. And uh, I'm gonna give it a little slice. Now, I know the camera crew that are here are standing, hoping that they're gonna get a little slice of this. And you know what? I think I might just call him in and just give it a little, give it a little whirl. So there's a one slice come off. Come on then, come on then. There you go, there you go, there you go. Oh. Words, if fail me. I've been watching you for hours cooking. Well, not hours, but that. Now, What's the sauce to go with it? You've got cranberry, of course. Thoroughly recommend a piccalilli. Not any piccalilli, but my piccalilli. Sorry, I've got my mouth full. The reason why this will complement this is because it's a natural piccalilli. Natural, with natural turmeric. The vegetables have been brined in here as well, so they're still crunchy. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to enjoy another slice of this ham with some pickle lily. Have a merry, merry Christmas. Enjoy 2021. You can have this on New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I'll see you on the other side. Merry Christmas and a happy new year.